It's those little things we can always find something to appreciate. So you do well. You cannot control your circumstances. There is one thing you can control: your attitude. And you have two choices. You can either choose to grumble and be upset about it and be mad about it and find everything wrong with the situation, or you can choose to appreciate all the little things that God has still blessed you with. Well, today is actually going to be one in about four series. Uh, God's interesting how he works. I was like, well, let's see, we're getting into the new year, and, and I had to uh, fill out my in-standing form so I could still be your pastor. <laughs> and I laughed. I looked at Linda, and I said, so what happens if I don't fill it out? If I'm not in-standing, does that mean I get to sit for all the sermons for the rest of the year? But I said, no. But there was one thing on there that they asked if you had credentials or certificates or whatever in these different attributes. And one of them was appreciative inquiry. And I thought, what in the heck is that? I've never even heard of it before. So I Googled it. And after four paragraphs, I still couldn't tell you what appreciative inquiry was. It just kind of talked in circles. But there was a workshop that I could take for three weeks. And so, I don't know, God was just kind of pushing that direction. So I did. I did the first one last week. It's every Tuesday. So I've got two more to go. But after sitting there listening, it's like, oh, okay, this is kind of like resiliency. This is kind of like gratitude. So I'm kind of doing my own little spinoff of that. But the first one we're going to look at this week is appreciation. This week's appreciation. Next week, we're going to talk about despair. <laughs> but the third week, about joy and hope. And the last week, how we come out of that, each situation as a new person in God, how we constantly evolve, how we constantly change. You know, nobody likes change. They hear that word and they go, change. But I want you to think about it. Every day you are different than you were the day before. Your skin cells are different, your hair is different, your weight's different, your attitude is different, everything is different. No matter what you've come out of, it can be a good, a good event or a bad event, you grow from it, you learn from it. You are always changing. So for people who don't like change, I think it's pretty ironic that there isn't two days that go by that we're really the same. And we're going to look at that a little more later on. But today what I wanted to focus on was the appreciation. And I wrote down because I wanted, there's two questions that Appreciative Inquiry says. It says, what in or through this event was my strength and what more positive could have happened because of that? So the first one is, what in or through that event was my strength? I want you to think back. I'm sure there are a flood of events that have just gone through your mind that you've had to endure. Maybe it was a health crisis. Maybe it was a death. Maybe it was a loss of a job. Maybe it was the, the in-between, waiting to find a new job. Maybe it was starting a family. Maybe, you know, I mean, there are so many things. Maybe it was, do I go back to school? Do I not go back to school? Do I get another degree? Do I not get another degree? Do I change, change whole directions in what I'm doing? I'm sure there's something that's going through your mind right now. A time that was really, really difficult. And in that time, I want you to think back to that. What was your strength? What got you through that time? And yes, we will say God, and that's true. God gets us through it. But he gives each of us unique strengths, unique abilities. For some people, it's always saying that the glass is full, not even half full. It's just saying that it's full. For some people, it's endurance. For some people, it's long-suffering. That may not sound like a strength. 
But for some who have had to deal with maybe really difficult marriages or difficult illnesses or difficult careers, and yet they go in day after day, not complaining, but dealing with each day as it comes. That's the gift of long suffering. So how do we take all of that and look at what our strengths were to learn from and pull from and then shift that to appreciation? It's really easy, like I talked to Annabelle, it's really easy to appreciate and we've got some many wonderful things coming up to appreciate because while Kara was not feeling good, she knew that everybody really appreciated and loved the egg casseroles last week, so she made one. And that's waiting for us after church. And there's a chocolate cake. That's really easy to appreciate, isn't it? What if you don't like chocolate cake and you only like white cake? That's what we're talking about. Do you still appreciate all the time and the effort that went in to whatever person invested into what they made. Well, that sounds really easy when you're talking about food and when you're talking about loved ones. But what about when things go wrong? I have a good friend who, well, two good friends right now that are in hospitals. One's in Grand Island and one's in Lincoln. And so that's what I did. Is that Friday? <laughs> I think so. We made a trip to Grand Island and saw that gal and then came home, made a trip to Lincoln to see the other one. The one that's in Lincoln, so she's 96, but still living on her own, and this gal's 86, going on 60, 100 miles an hour. Her husband is in the throes of dementia, but still living at home, so she's taking care of him, trying to keep everything going. This woman goes to three to four Bible studies a week, plus church, and she lives in York, but their church is in Hampton. Going all the time. She had a massive stroke two weeks ago. And it left her right side paralyzed. She's still as smart as a whip, knows exactly what's going on, but she can't talk. Thankfully, she can swallow and eat. Because that a lot of times is affected too. But during this time when everything could be going wrong, and it seems like maybe it is, it's those little things that she's appreciating. She can't, she's right-handed, she can't move her right hand, but she can still write with her left. Of course, the word she's wanting to say is not the words that she's writing, but she's appreciative that she can write because through therapy, it's probably going to come back. She's appreciative of the fact that she can't move this side, but she's got nurses that are coming in and moving her, doing the things for her that she can't do. Now, that's, that takes a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> because for most of us, we'd be laying there grumbling and complaining, and why am I still here? You know, if you're going to do this to me, why didn't you just take me? Why didn't I just die? Because this is, a, this is no fun. This is... You know, we get so caught up in that moment that we can't see where this may lead in the future. It's the being appreciative of the little things. Maybe there was a time in your life that you lost a job. And all you could focus on was the fact that you didn't have a job. And, and you're so focused on the fact that I've got to get another job and I've got to find one right now. Were you appreciative of that time that God gave you in between? Because maybe there was a reason for it. Maybe you've been so caught up in work that you hadn't been able to be with your kids or do the things that you wanted to do. And while, yes, the next job was going to come, God gave you that little break to enjoy being able to go and do the things that you hadn't been able to do before. Maybe it was just having that break to go, I can't do anything about this. <laughs> but what I can control is my attitude right now in the middle of this. There was a spot when John, he'd been gone a lot. He was doing um, storm chasing. It wasn't quite as glamorous as it sounded. 
But he'd been gone off and on for almost four years. Uh, he had done Hurricane Katrina. He had been, at, before that, at Hastings for a year. And then he was down in uh, Wichita, Kansas, and Minnesota, all over. And there was, and I was so frustrated because he wasn't home. He was missing all of the stuff that the kids were doing at that time. And, and then when he did come home, he kind of went into the throes of a little bit of depression, and he was home for quite a bit, not working. And I remember getting so frustrated with that, and then I realized I have a choice. I could be really upset and try to make him do something, or I could sit back and go, you know what, this too shall pass. Things will get back to normal, but right now, he's getting to be the dad that he didn't get to be for all those years. And so when, when the zoo thing came, I'm like, you get to go <laughs> with Chantel this time, or you get to go with Ashley, and you get to experience that. And when parent-teacher conference came, i had been doing it. I'm like, good, we get to go do this together. There was things that he got to do that he hadn't been able to do. Now, I could have missed that. I could have been so focused on what I thought should have happened and wanting him to, you know, get back into life right away. But instead, I chose to stop. And even though things were a little difficult and it was different to appreciate that moment at that time, knowing that it would change, and it did. But you know, the kids remember that time, and they treasure it. You know, I have talked to people who have had cancer. And you would think, what could you possibly appreciate out of cancer? Even those who ended up not coming out good on the end, ended up passing away. And it was really interesting. In fact, there was um, a young man who was a teenager who got cancer. And he was like 18, 19. And he said, you know, he was actually glad that he got cancer. I thought that was such an odd remark. And he said, I was on the wrong road. I was going in the wrong direction. I was destined <laughs> for hell. But when God gave me this cancer, I had to stop. And now, I know where I'm going. I thought, wow. It's a 19-year-old coming up with that realization. Sometimes it takes people their entire life, and they still don't get it. So that's why I, this week I wanted to look at that appreciation. I want you to go home this week. And I, I encourage you and I challenge you to do the same thing that I just gave Annabelle. If you've got a note card, if you've got a notepad, if you've got something even right by your calendar or by your bed stand, Every day, this isn't just a thankful journal. I want you to write something that you're appreciative for. Even if it's something, like I said, you don't like, but you know what went into it to make it happen. You can appreciate that. You can appreciate that on the 18 degree days, you had a car that started, even if you don't like your car. <laughs> you can appreciate that the furnace is working because you remember two years ago that it wasn't working or that the power was out. It's those little things we can always find something to appreciate. So you do what? Well, you cannot control your circumstances. There is one thing you can control, your attitude. And you have two choices. You can either choose to grumble and be upset about it and be mad about it and find everything wrong with the situation or you can choose to appreciate all the little things that God is to bless you with. 